So today we're going to talk about the common neon tetra, Arachidon anisei. This is a very popular fish kept in the fish hobby. Almost 24 million are sold in America every year. The reasons for this is obvious. This is a stunning little fish with bright colors, bright red and bright blue. Not only this, this is a very peaceful fish and can be kept in most community fish tanks. You can keep this fish in quite small fish tanks, starting from about 10 gallons. Like I said before, they are very easy to keep and very peaceful, getting along with almost all fish, except for obviously larger fish, which may eat them. The maximum size of this fish is roughly one and a half inches, with the male being slightly longer, but the female tends to be a lot fatter. So this fish was first discovered back in 1934 in the Amazon jungles. It is part of the Caracidia family and uh, comprises quite a large genera. Even within the Neon Tetra species, there are many, many color morphs found in the wild and bred as aquarium strains. And of course, do not confuse this fish with the cardinal tetra, which looks similar, but with the cardinal tetra. But the cardinal tetra has a long red and blue line across the entire length of the body, whereas the neon tetra doesn't. The colors stop roughly halfway. If you're considering this fish for your community tank, uh, keep them in schools. I would suggest, depending on the tank size, at least 12 to 15 fish to start off with. Uh, they become very skittish and shy away when they are not kept in schools. Almost no one can resist buying this fish and I suspect that all fish keepers at some point have kept this fish. In the wild they will live for eight years but in the aquarium they do quite well and will live for about five years. So you'll be wondering how does a fish like this survive in the wild? With these bright colors you would think that they'd be eaten very quickly by various predators. In fact, they use this red-blue coloring to locate each other in the very dark, peaty water. So how does this work in nature for predation? Well, the rest of the fish is actually transparent, and this serves them well when they're trying to hide away from danger. When danger appears, they will actually switch off their coloration. They will lose the red and blue coloring, and it will just fade away, and this fish will just become a ghost and fade into the background. Now, it is interesting to know when this fish is stressed, it does the exact same thing. It will lose the red and blue coloring. And this can also be a very good indication of if this fish is sick, especially when it catches the neon disease. Uh, the color will fade completely from it and you will know that something's up. This fish is known to grow to about two and a half inches, but it is more common in an aquarium that they're only about one and a half inches long. Now, these fish are quite distinctive because of their coloring, but not just that, they've got very large eyes for their body shape and they've got a very distinctive round nose. Once again, I will say that this fish is quite often uh, mistaken by beginners for the cardinal tetra, but when you see the picture of the two fish side by side, there's no mistaking the two. The cardinal is the far more stunning of the two species. So what is the best habitat to provide this fish in aquarium? Well, they come from uh, South America, specifically the Amazon uh, forest basin, Peru, Colombia, uh, Brazil. And the forest that they find themselves in tends to be quite dark. And quite often the leaves fall in the water, making the water very peaty. So the coloration of these streams that they are in tend to be quite brownish. And hence, this is the reason for the coloration of this particular species. So if you want to provide a realistic uh, aquarium for these fish, I suggest a very well planted aquarium with a dim light if you want to get the best colors from these fish. Use a lot of driftwood and for the substrate, try and use a black gravel if you can. The fish will really stick out and it will make them feel comfortable. And if they're in a small school, they'll happily swim in this school all day up and down the fish tank. So when it comes to providing the perfect tank conditions for these fish, um, I must stress these fish do not like massive water changes and they especially do not like uh, the conditions that a brand new fish tank provides. 
they will suffer heavily from the chlorinated water. So it is best to introduce them to an aquarium that has been running for a while. Also keep the pH between six and seven. Uh, I like the pH to be more on the acidic side. The harder the water, then the coloration will not be shown of this particular species. They thrive best between 70 and 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So do not keep the water too cool because once again, they will not show the best colors. If you're keeping a tetra biotype with only small fish, they don't represent a very big load on the filter system. So you can actually get away with a sponge filter. And remember, when you're doing your weekly water changes, keep it to no more than 25%, because as I stressed before, they really hate large water changes. You can get away with a tank size of about 10 gallons, but I recommend getting a slightly larger tank and start from about 20 gallons. Now, if you're breeding this species, that is a completely different story. This fish is not a fussy eater, and in the wild, it's omnivorous. It will eat almost anything. They'll eat algae, all sorts of green matter that they'll find in the wild, tiny little crustaceans, and they will take all kinds of frozen food, flake food, pellet food. Make sure that when you're feeding them pelleted and frozen food that you've cut it to small enough size so that they can eat it. Now this is a very peaceful fish, but bear in mind because of its small size, bear in mind what tank mates you can keep them with. They'll be quite happy with most barbs, other tetras, small catfish like Corydoras. When it comes to diseases, obviously all the main diseases can affect the neon tetra, but there's one specifically called the neon tetra disease. Now, neon tetra disease is not just uh, affecting neon tetras, but it is very, very common in neon tetras. Now, the first thing that will happen with neon tetra disease, and there's another one called the false tetra disease, the color will start to fade on these fish. They'll start to swim erratically, and you may see cysts on the stomach of these fish. The fish will also lose its appetite and stop feeding. Now, the bad thing about this disease is there's no current cure for this. Now, if there are YouTubers out there that know how to cure this, please let me know. Um, but as far as I know, I haven't come across anything. When you see a fish with this disease, it is best to catch it and dispose of it humanely. The problem being with neon tetra disease is that it actually spreads quite fast in the tank. So if your neon show this, then there's a very good chance that the other fish in your fish tank have it as well. Okay, now I know there's many people that have tried to breed this fish. Now I will say this about breeding neon tetras. It is a very, very difficult fish to breed. But I will counter that. It is also a very easy fish to breed. The first thing to do is you need to try and separate the males from the females. The males are a lot thinner, slimmer than the females. You'll see that the females are quite fat and the males tend to be longer. So why is the neon tetra so difficult to breed? Well, in the wild, it is the water conditions that actually trigger them to start breeding. So once you have separated these fish, your next step is to drop the pH. You need to drop the pH to between five and six. And you also need to drop the temperature down to about 75. Now remember before you do any of this, condition your tetra as well. Try and feed them lots of live food if you can. Uh, baby Grindle worm is excellent. So if you're going to be leaving your neon tetras in the breeding tank for a few days, I suggest that you put marbles on the bottom of the tank. This allow the eggs to fall through and the parents won't be able to get to them. Now the fry will hatch in between two and three days. So make sure you've got food source ready for them that they can eat. Because they're so small, I suggest that you have live food. Um, you can start off with infusoria type foods, paramecium, uh, and then move on to baby brine shrimp. Once they're slightly larger, you can then move on to crushed flake food. Now this was just a brief introduction into keeping and breeding your tetras. There is a lot more involved when you become a little bit more serious about breeding these fish. And I will make another video with a more in-depth guide on setting up a, a breeding fish tank for this species.